Is Peyton Manning getting into the sports card hobby game? Let's talk about it. To all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends, how we doing? We have made it to the weekend. Hope everybody is doing really, really, really good. I'm still somewhat reeling from the Deshaun Watson wildness. I'm a huge New Orleans Saints fan. For a second there, I thought it was between the Saints and the Falcons, and he goes to the Browns on a $230 million fully guaranteed contract, three first round picks, and he still has a probable suspension coming. I, I am absolutely shocked. And to be honest, I'm relieved as a Saints fan that we did not pull off this trade. Now, my in-laws are huge Browns fans. So there's a part of me that, look, I want this to work out for them. But man, as a Saints fan, it just seemed like a lot. I heard us, we were giving away three first rounders and then also players potentially. It was about to be a lot going out the door for one player. And I get it. Watson's a, a great QB. Um, he's, he's shown what he can do, but man, that is just a truckload uh, to get one player. And I and I get it. QBs are, are you know the most important position, but still, I'm, I'm just happy that we did not pull off this trade. If you're new here, guys, we are talking about sports cards, collectible stuff pretty much every day, just about. Hit that subscribe button if you like what you hear, the like button, and we will continue on. We will continue on bringing the content. All right, today we're talking about another famous football player, kind of Miss Sanum, frankly. Peyton Manning, so, so dominant during his career. He has since retired, obviously, and now he is doing media things. He's been doing different stuff, doing stuff with his brother. Is it Monday Night Football that he's on or Sunday Night Football? No, I think it's Monday Night Football. Him and Eli actually have a, a really good thing going, I think, where they kind of banter back and forth. They make fun of each other while they watch football. Amazing stuff. Well, he has also started his own production company, Omaha, Omaha. Productions is what it's called, and he is stepping into the sports cards hobby. So let's kind of backtrack a little bit. A few days ago, Brad, the comeback card investor, and I interviewed Ezra, who is the CEO of Collectible. Check that out on Brad's channel, the comeback card investor. It was three or four days ago, Wednesday night, uh, this this past week. Uh, really, really good interview. It was good talking to Ezra again. I've talked to him in the past, uh, but good to just kind of get a feel for what's going on with Collectible and what they're doing specifically with a Las Vegas show coming up trade show called the Mint Collective, which I am a late entrant to that. I am going to actually fly in and fly out to check it out. It's in Las Vegas at MGM, I believe, and it's the weekend of the 25th through 27th next weekend. And I'm going to try to get as much footage as I can. I don't know what to expect with this particular show, so keep an eye out because I will try to be reporting back on what I'm seeing. I'll make a video kind of leading up on expectations for the show, what I'm looking for, etc. This show was originally planned to be in January, and they moved it back due to the pandemic, moved it back to the end of March. And when I remember in January, I don't remember Peyton Manning and Omaha Productions being a part of that marketing piece when they were doing a lot of the marketing stuff. And I, But I have seen that rolled out over the last month or so. Jerry Rice is also going to be there as a speaker, and there's going to be other athletes. There's going to be a lot of signings and different things. I don't think it's going to be a massive exhibit hall as far as the card show portion. I think it's 200 or 300 plus tables. Still, I'm, I'm excited though to see what that looks like and just the, the vibe of all of it. Um, but yeah, so Peyton Manning Omaha Productions is a part of this and Ezra told us that they have a three-year deal with Omaha Productions through the Mint Collective. So we will be seeing kind of more of him. I'm excited to see what he's bringing to the table. And one thing that I didn't, I didn't realize did not put this together, but I knew that Ken Golden was coming out with a Netflix special. It's called The Golden Touch. And Omaha Productions is the producer of it. I did not realize that. So Peyton Manning's team is actually producing it. And I kind of, I like this that, you know, athletes getting more and more involved in the overall hobby content space. But then also, I'm interested to see kind of how that filters down into, you know, what they're doing for, you know, with manufacturers and with the cards, et cetera. Historically, you've always seen athletes at signing. 
thing. So that's kind of what they do at card shows. But outside of that, you haven't really seen a lot of promotion for sports memorabilia, sports cards, and that sort of thing. And that's the piece that I really hope changes. And with Ken Golden's Netflix documentary, which, and I don't know how that's going to go, documentary or show, I, I believe it's a show, kind of, I assume it's like a, a reality type show, um, like a Pawn Stars type thing. I'm assuming that that's how it's going to look, but I don't know. There's not a set start date for that. I'm excited to hear when that's going to hit Netflix because I want to see what that does for the overall hobby. And I know that, you know, people will say like, oh, you know, a Magic Johnson documentary or a Michael Jordan documentary is not going to necessarily affect card prices uh, directly. And while I do agree with that, I think that just as a whole, it has an effect, an overall kind of, it's a move to the mainstream. And that's what we're all kind of waiting to see. Is it going to be 1990 all over again, where you have a lot of new collectors coming in and getting involved in this? Because this is not a mainstream. Uh, sports card, sports memorabilia is not a mainstream hobby at this stage. At this stage, there's been a lot of talk over the last months about F1 cards. And really, F1 cards, what was the catalyst for F1 cards gaining in popularity? The Netflix show. And you, you hear that from all, really a lot of the high end collectors. Oh, the, the Netflix show. I watched it. I got to know the drivers. I got into it. And then I was like, huh, are there F1 cards? Now there also is a, a, a low supply of modern F1 cards. So that's kind of a part of where the pricing has gone. But the fact though that you have a Netflix special that really kind of spurred on a lot of the interest in that particular sport. And so that's what I'm watching for, you know, with the golden touch, with a lot of the media coming into this space is 2022 two really going to be the year of sports card media kind of taking off and that really being a thing that that evolves. There already is a lot of sports card content, but I think that that's only getting started, especially, you know, the high production stuff seems to be coming. It feels like there's more and more of it coming. And so that's going to be what I want to watch. And I hope that I get to see Peyton Manning kind of in person. I don't know. I assume he's probably going to be tucked away. Um, I know he's got, a, he's got different panels and things that he's probably working on, but interested in seeing Peyton Manning overall role in the hobby? Will it grow? Will it just be kind of on the content side? Will he be kind of more of a uh, ambassador for, for the sports card hobby? It will be interesting to watch and see. Guys, thank you very much for joining me here today. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.